Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about digital logic. And in this one, I'm going to start in on talking about uh, state machines. And I'm going to talk about state diagrams and state tables for uh, these state machines. And what is a state machine? All right, a state machine is a circuit that can uh, re be in different states uh, and there are two different types of uh, state machine at least as I'm classifying it so you've got counters and you have everything else all right so I suspect that that's not that clear yet so let me show you a counter a counter could look like this where it has five states and at any one time, it's in only one of these states. And the counter has a predetermined pattern that it never deviates from. And so it always goes from state A to B to C to D to E. And you could design this to have any number of states. It could have two states. It could have 100 as long as it always goes through the exact same pattern each time it is a counter and uh, a counter despite what we're calling it doesn't actually have to be counting uh, so this wouldn't necessarily be one two three four five one two three four five it could be outputting a value of say 17 12 6 negative 4 and 50 uh, it just uh, doesn't matter as long as you have it wired so that it goes through the same states in the same sequence every time then it is a counter all right uh, now the more common state machine that you're going to see or at least the more complex that you're going to be doing uh, more study with is the everything else type and I'm going to show you one type and we're going to work out a state diagram for it. And I'm going to have uh, different, four different states. So A, B, C, D. And I'm just making this up as I go. Uh, so bear with me. There's a reason that I'm going to be taking a little while on this. So uh, a state machine can have input and it can have output. Uh, counters do not have input because they need to go through the same sequence every time and a uh, everything else kind can allow you to choose which state it moves to based on your input. And uh, I guess technically you could have an up-down counter which does have input but it still goes through the same sequence every time. It doesn't just necessarily jump from A to C. Uh, and it gets more complex from that. Then it's maybe not even in the same league if it has a reset or a load. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so A to B, let's say if I give it an input of uh, 0, it'll go to B. And if I give it an input of 1, it goes to A. All right. So if I look at this state diagram the way it is right now, you couldn't tell me which state it goes to uh, based on its input. And so we need to indicate that. And so this is the way that I'm going to draw it. Uh, I'm going to have my input, and then I'm going to have my output. Now. You can have any number of inputs and any number of outputs, but I'm going to stick with just one bit of input and one bit of output, just to keep things simple. All right. So I said that this is a zero, takes it over to B, and let's just give it a output value of one, if it has that. And here, um, if it has an input of one, it might still have an output of one. All right, we're all done with A. B, maybe I'm going to say it goes to C. 
very important to draw these arrowheads so you know which way it's going. Uh, if it's zero and its output will be zero. And D, one slash zero. All right, we're done with B. C is going to go to D if it's zero slash zero and around to itself one slash one. And D is going to go to B Okay, so this is a complete state diagram for a circuit. Uh, I won't tell you right now how this is actually implemented. I'll get to that in another video. Uh, and I'm going to show you now an equivalent way of describing this circuit. So this is a state diagram. Now I'm going to show you a state table. And a state table gets a little bit more complex. Uh, we can't name our states exactly like this. We need to, uh, well, we could, but uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to just tell you right now, and we'll get to that why later, uh, that this is going to require two flip-flops to be able to have four different states. All right, and I'm going to have the, uh, A is going to be represented by the value of the Q outputs on those flip-flops being 0, 0, B is 0, 1, C is 1, 0, and D is 1, 1. Okay, so this is our little uh, secret decoder pin, whatever. Uh, all right, so let's take state A. If I have uh, 0, 0, this is our current state. This is my input. Next state. And output. And this is one of two different ways to draw a state table. I'll show another one in future videos. Uh, this one is, this way is better for going to a synthesized circuit, and the other way is better for state reduction, which I will also talk about in a future video. So, uh, if I have input of 0 and 1. So, if my input for A is 0, then I go to state B. And state B, we can see, is 0, 1. And if I have my current state is A and my input is 1, my next state is A. And if my input is 0, my output is 1 and 1. Okay. And then uh, going with state B, if my out, or input is 0, I go to state C, which is 1, 0, and my output is 0. And uh, bear with me, I think I maybe am going to speed it up at this point uh, because it's pretty boring to watch me work my way through it, but uh, I will uh, stop speeding up in just a second. Okay, so this is our completed state table for this state diagram. And uh, you can uh, maybe pause it, take a look at how, how it looks. I'll see if I can get out of your way so I'm not blocking your view of it. Um, these two are equivalent. So uh, that is state tables and state diagrams. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, you might take a look at my YouTube channel where I have more videos or visit me at uh, my website, which is robotbrigade.com.